Hi, this is Mark Hibben for Technomicon Media with a video review of the new iPad. And I happen to have it right here, of course. This is the 64GB uh, uh, wireless 4G version, the, actually the Verizon version. Uh, it is a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier, uh, but the screen is so worth it. Now, for this review, I'll be doing the kind of side-by-side -side comparisons I've done in the past. And for that purpose, I've got my previous generation iPad 2 to help us with that comparison. So we can see where the improvements are there. And I also have an interesting Android device. Here it is right here. Uh, this is the uh, Asus uh, Transformer Prime. Now you might think to look at it that it's just a netbook. But it's not a netbook. It doesn't run Windows in any form. It doesn't have an Intel processor. It is actually the uh, latest and greatest uh, Android tablet with a clip-on keyboard and it runs uh, Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. Now, some authors have claimed that, uh, that the Asus Transformer Prime is a worthy competitor to the iPad. Uh, some have even claimed it's a viable alternative. Uh, I, I really don't know. At this point, uh, we haven't run any of the tests, so I don't know how things are going to turn out. But I think it'll be very interesting to see how the uh, Transformer Prime stacks up against the new iPad. So uh, we're going to put them side by side and uh, head to head, toe to toe, and we're going to find out which is the more desirable mobile device. As you can see, the Transformer Prime TF201 has a screen with an aspect ratio almost that of an HD TV, about 16 by 10, while the new iPad preserves its classic 4 by 3 ratio. Perhaps the most distinctive feature of the 201 is its animated wallpaper. There's a whole section in the Android store devoted to these live wallpapers, and some are really quite clever. Now let's take a glance at the specs for our iPads and the Transformer Prime. The big change in the new iPad is, of course, the screen, which quadruples the number of pixels compared to the iPad 2. The TF201 has a very good screen capable of HD video display in the 720p format, but the new iPad still has three times the pixels and can display 1080p HD video with no loss of resolution. The TF201 doesn't come with a wireless option as for the iPads, only supporting Wi-Fi but was initially advertised as having GPS. The GPS turned out to work so poorly that ASUS has stopped advertising it as a feature of the Transformer Prime. However, the 201 is equipped with perhaps the most advanced ARM processor available, the NVIDIA Tegra 3, with four processor cores running at up to 1.3 GHz. This should make the Transformer Prime faster for processor-intensive tasks. Both tablets have true multitasking operating systems, but take rather different approaches to managing running apps. On iPad, double-clicking the Home button brings up a taskbar that shows the currently running apps. Android affords multiple ways to manage running apps. Here I have a widget on the Home screen that shows the running processes and allows me to stop them individually or as a group. The Transformer Prime is quite thin at 8.3 millimeters and comes with a wealth of built-in expansion, including a micro HDMI connector and a micro SD flash card slot on the left side. While the keyboard has a full-size SD flash card slot and a full-size USB 2 port on the right side. The new iPad is a little thicker than the TF201 at 9.4 millimeters. Other than the SIM card slot, there's no memory expansion, and the docking connector is the only physical interface to the device. While the iPad can be paired with a Bluetooth keyboard, there's no option for an attached keyboard, 
but third-party solutions are available. Perhaps my favorite feature of the Transformer Prime is the detachable keyboard. It's a bit cramped, but provides good tactile feel for touch typists. The clip holds the tablet very firmly, but allows easy removal and replacement of the tablet. Touching the trackpad causes a mouse cursor to appear on the screen. The home screen works pretty much as it always has on the iPad. Swiping side to side moves between different panels of apps, with all apps found on the home screen. The taskbar now has an option to turn on AirPlay video mirroring if an Apple TV is on your network. The TF201 takes a similar approach to the home screen, where you swipe to move from panel to panel. App icons and screen widgets can be repositioned easily. Generally, not all apps need to be on the home screen, since there's a separate application tray that shows all the available apps and widgets. Now let's look at application launching. First, launching Kindle. Next, Google Earth. Then Google Maps. Here I try to get a GPS location on the Transformer Prime and it just tells me that it's waiting and it'll wait forever because it'll never get a GPS location. Next, uh, YouTube. And notice that the Android version of YouTube has a much cooler 3D interface. Netflix launch and here I'm showing actual physical tablet screens because it's not possible to show when the Netflix application finishes via the HDMI output. GTA 3, here I'm showing the time to start a new game. Browser launching. Here I'm showing the time to launch the browser and load the CNN homepage. Next I show the time to navigate from the CNN homepage to the Technomicon homepage. Now let's summarize the results. The green highlights indicate the better time or the better benchmark score. You notice there isn't a lot of green in the Transformer Prime column. And that actually does uh, confirm the general impression you get from using the device. It feels rather sluggish compared to the iPad, especially for web browsing. Surprisingly, even on the CPU intensive benchmarks, like the SunSpider test or the Passmark Software CPU benchmark, the Transformer Prime still doesn't do as well as the new iPad. And this is rather curious, and it's something I, I do intend to explore in my specific review of the Transformer Prime. We noticed some other issues in using the Transformer Prime's web browser. One of them is a basic slowness in responding to our preview buttons. 
And the preview buttons are just implemented with JavaScript so that they're universally compatible with almost any browser. But the slowness was very, very consistent, and it just makes the browser seem very sluggish in navigating our site. Another issue we found was with embedded video. Of course, the Android-based browser uses Flash, and it seems to work okay as long as the embedded video stays embedded. But when you try to go to full screen mode, we run into problems. With all that amazing graphics horsepower. So we're going to bring up three demos to show you some really amazing stuff. Here you see us going into full screen mode on the new iPad with the HDMI output. But when we try to go to full screen mode on the Transformer Prime's HDMI output, we get a blank screen. Another problem we ran into with the Transformer Prime has to do with how the browser deals with screen rotation on the fly. With the iPad, it's no big deal. You can rotate the screen and uh, resize the content, and we actually try to take advantage of that by allowing the user to zoom in on the basic content panel of our page. On the iPad, it just works. On the Transformer Prime, screen rotation sort of works. Here you see I rotated the screen and I'm zooming in, and it looks like everything's fine. I navigate to a new page. The page loads. and then I try cruising around the article. And all of a sudden, what happened to my page? Parts of it are missing. This conveys to me very poor quality control in the development of the browser. It's as if they never bothered to test it in portrait mode because they thought no one would use it that way. And there's an easy fix, and you just saw it, which is if I flip it around back to landscape mode, the problem clears up.